This, everybody, is the spiny erraticum. And this is a very rare fruit from the Sao Francisco Valley of Brazil. And I am very excited to have this in my hand right now because this is an anona fruit, and I love anona fruits. Uh, these are things like the sugar apple, the cherimoya, the atomoya, things like that. But as you can see with this one, there is one glaring difference, and that is that this looks awesome. As much as I love Anona fruits, I have one big complaint about them, and that is there are 169 different species in this genus. However, for whatever reason, people for this particular genus like to mix up the common names. So the common name for one species will be given to another species. It's incredibly confusing because if you look up the name for one thing, you might find the information for another. And this fruit here is no different. There are roughly a bajillion different names for this. However, it conveniently will often be called the red blank or the orange blank or another one, the spiny blank. The reason why this often will have spiny in its common name and also spine is in the scientific name for this is because the plant that this grows from has little thorns on it. The reason why I prefer to use the word spiny erraticum is because that is closest to what this is called in Brazil where it is from. That is called this which I am not going to even attempt to pronounce. This is becoming popular amongst rare fruit growers. You can get the seeds online on a variety of sources and uh, something people might be growing in their backyard, not just because, you know, Anona fruits are you know, delicious, but also it's a very ornamental plant. But uh, that was not always the case. Up until recently, this was nearing extinction. It was only being grown on a very small scale in small communities in hard to reach areas of Brazil. That changed thanks to the efforts of the botanist Harry Lorenzi. He went on an expedition, managed to bring back seeds of this, and then those seeds were spread amongst uh, you know, the growing communities. Now, how I got my hands on this thing is from miamifruit.org. They sell the fresh fruit of this online and also uh, seeds as well. So if you are interested in trying this or interested in growing it, go to miamifruit.org. And to Miami Fruit, thank you. <laughs> this is, you know, it's becoming a little bit more popular to grow it, to get the seeds of it, but finding the fresh fruit of this is still a very difficult thing to find. And one of the reasons for that is that this Anona, probably more than any other Anona that I've seen, is extraordinarily perishable. I can see that my thumb is sinking into the flesh just from like gravity alone. There's now a thumbprint in there. Um, and actually, that is how you want them to be. When Miami Fruit sent this to me, they said, make sure that when you eat these, they are just like basically falling apart. I can tell that this one is ready to go. However, there is one other tip to tell if these are ripe, and this is something that, well, <laughs> actually is used with this fruit here, which I happen to have, a pond apple, a different species, Anona glabra. These ones also have to be super, super squishy when they are ready. And in Vietnam, where these are quite popular, what people do is they'll grab the stem of this, give it a little twist, and pull it out. And if it comes out clean, that means it is ready to go. And I have a feeling that will work for this one too. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna grab the stem, give it a little twist, and a little pull like a hand grenade. Yeah, it came out clean, so I think it is good to go. And yeah. That is a beautiful looking fruit. Not just bright orange on the outside, but inside too. So one thing about this that may be a positive or a negative, depending on who you are and what you're going to do with this thing, this thing's jam-packed full of seeds. There are a ton of, look at all those seeds. You can see all those little black spots there. So if you are planning on growing this thing, 
you're in luck. <laughs> you get a lot of seeds every time you get just like one fruit. But I'd say like if you want to eat this thing, probably you're gonna want to strain that out. So let's give it a try. And by the way, you can eat the skin of this one. So I'm gonna try it skin and all. This is not like any Anona fruit that I have ever had. So Anona fruits, if you haven't had one, if you haven't seen my reviews of them, they tend to have a combination of different sorts of tropical flavors. Coconut, mango, pineapple, uh, banana, those sorts of flavors in different combinations mixed together in like a creamy sort of custard. This has none of those. None, absolutely none. It does not taste tropical. It tastes more like a root vegetable. <laughs> it tastes kind of like a carrot. Maybe a bit like, actually a, a quite a bit like persimmon. There is like a little hint of a, like a bitterness to it. Like the bitterness that you'd get from, you know, some kinds of squash. It's good. It's quite good but it is not like other Anonas, like at all. One interesting thing about it is that it is not super sweet and is not super sour. So if I were to rate the sweetness on this, even like in this very, very ripened state, which is probably as sweet as it will get, it's like a two. One recommendation that I saw about this fruit is to not just have it room temperature off the tree, but to first put it into the fridge, let it chill, and then try it. So I did that. I took this one and I put this one in the fridge. And this one, by the way, has a funky shape to it. They don't always look like a little soursop. This one looks a little bit like a, I don't know, like a stomach or something. And uh, you may notice that it's got a little bit of a dark color to it. I don't think that necessarily means that it has gone bad, but it definitely is ready to go. So let's give it a try. That is still good, and having it chilled is better. It's like having um, a pudding. <laughs> and this actually reminds me a little bit, having it chilled like this, like another fruit that people say to chill first, the mame sapote. It's got a little bit of that sort of flavor, which is also kind of like a sweet potato, pumpkin-y kind of taste. Let's play with this a little bit. What I want to try first is something that people do with another Anona fruit, the pond apple. So pond apples, they leave a little bit to be desired when you eat them out of hand. When you eat them out of hand, they're like, a little mild. So what people do with this is they usually add sugar and lime juice to it to wake it up. And when you do that, it is absolutely delicious. Very, very popular in Vietnam for that. I will have a video about pond apple in the future, I promise. But for now, I'm going to follow the technique that people do for this to make juice, and I'm going to do it with this instead and see if that wakes up any other flavors that might be hiding in there. What are you hiding? And here we go. So how I made this juice is I took a whole bunch of the fruits and I pushed them through a strainer. You know, in the past, I have used this strainer for other things and had disastrous results. In this case, it actually worked. And in this case, the seeds had like enough integrity to them that it didn't get crushed through my strainer, which was nice. And also because the peels are edible, I just chucked them in whole and they fell apart. It worked, it worked really well. And after I separated out the pulp, I took a few spoons of that, put it in a glass, added some lime, some sugar, some water, some ice, and a little lime wedge, and that's what you got. Before I even drink this, I gotta say, it looks really good. It, it looks great. That orange color really comes out. And, uh, but yeah, most important thing, That tastes good. That tastes good. It, it is mild. <laughs> it is mild. The sweetness level on this is perfect. It's not like super sweet for like a nice refreshing drink to have that is not, that like goes down easy. 
the amount of sugar in there is perfect, just like one little spoon. The lime, though, does kind of steal the show a little bit, so that is the first flavor that I'm getting. I think if I wanted the Anona flavor to come out more, I might put less lime, but saying that, the lime does work with the fruit. It kind of goes down like watermelon juice. Really like hydrating, light, nice, mild flavor. It, it's very refreshing. This is a good drink. I, I do enjoy this. But let's go a little crazy now. And we're gonna go away from fruit and go more into like a vegetable kind of application because this isn't like a super sweet sort of thing. And the fact that it does have this little bit of like carrot root vegetable sort of thing in there, I wanna play with that. Now I wish I could take full credit for this, but I actually was inspired by uh, Harry Lorenzi. He has a, a botanical garden that he runs, and at the Botanical Garden, he has a restaurant, and that restaurant, he has a dip. It's interesting to, to take an Anona fruit and go in the direction of something more savory. Here it is, spiny erraticum dip. You know, a lot of times on this channel, I make things, and while I'm making them, I'm like, this is the first time anyone has ever made this. In this case, it's not. <laughs> Which is a little bit bizarre. I mean, maybe not this particular application, but dip has been made with the spiny erraticum. And um, we're about to find out if that is a good idea or not. So in order to make this, what I did is I decided not to dirty a whole bunch of things. Like I didn't want to pull my food processor out or anything like that. So I have like a little Indonesian mortar and pestle and I did this with that. So I crushed up a single clove of garlic, a fourth of a jalapeno, and half of a lemon. And I mixed that all together into a little slurry, put that in a bowl, added the pulp, some seasoning. Uh, the seasoning that I used is a Badia Complete Seasoning, just kind of like a Vegeta or all-purpose kind of seasoning. And uh, because that has salt in it, I didn't add salt to this. I don't want it to be too salty. And I put a little bit of olive oil on top, a little crack of pepper, a little bit of scallion, and I think that's it. And, you know, it looks like red pepper dip. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess of myself. So the question here, <laughs> is whether or not the fruit flavor comes out or if I'm just tasting garlic and jalapeno. I think the fact that this looks cool and you can tell people that it has this rare anona fruit in it, I feel like that is reason enough to use it. But is there like actually a reason to use it is the question. I feel like um, in this case, a flavor does come out in this that is a savory sort of flavor but again, a mild one. It's maybe in the direction of tomatoes. But when it's like this, it kind of reminds me of gak fruit. They are prized for their color, and they do impart like this mild, like hearty flavor, but it's not one that like hits you like right ahead. It just kind of like works in the background. And I feel like this is kind of doing that. It's definitely the sort of thing that you would be using this as a base for other flavors. And it's interesting that you can work with it in both directions. You can go savory with this, and this does work. If you were to give this to somebody and didn't tell them what you did, to, what you put in there, they would just presume that this was like a pepper dip. So I think that's about it for the spiny erraticum or the orange soursop, or the red cherimoya, or whatever the hell you want to call it. This fruit is very interesting. You know, as somebody who has had a ton of Anonas over the years, this one is a complete outlier. You know, I, I can kind of understand why Anona fruits are often mixed around. Like, people will use the same common name to refer to several different species. I kind of get it. They are different. They are different species. They're like snowflakes. They are all unique. It's great. Uh, but there is a commonality. 
Not with this one. This is a completely different experience. It's got nothing to do with the other ones. How it looks, how it tastes. In fact, you can eat the skin. Like, there's so much about this one. Uh, I'm glad that this fruit that was nearing extinction, and now we get this chance of trying this very, very unique Anona fruit. Uh, once again, go to miamifruit.org if you would like to try the fresh fruit or get the seeds of this fruit and try it yourself. And um, I think that's about it. I'll see you all next time. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. I would like to give a big shout out to Grayson. Grayson is a super patron over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I managed to afford to do all the things that I do on this channel. So Grayson, thank you so much. And to everyone else out there who is interested in learning more about how you can help to support the channel and get some really cool rewards in return, check out the link in the description below. Thanks so much.